Hello and welcome to this bus earning tutorial on how to submit your PQQ from the Cooper portal for school transport services. The tutorial is broken down into the following sections. Registration and login, including how to amend user information. Accessing the event, including downloading the template. Completing the PQQ, including uploading the template. Reviewing any submission errors that may occur during the upload process. And finally, how to submit clarification questions that you may have in relation to your PQQ submission. Section one, registration and login. This stage, you should have received the registration email from Coupa and hopefully you have managed to successfully register in the system. However, if you are still having difficulty with the registration process, please contact BE School Tenders at BusEarn.ie and a member of the procurement team will assist you. Open your web browser and type in busearn.cso.coopahost.com and hit return. You will then be brought to the Coupa login page. Enter your username or email address, followed by your password, and simply hit the login button. If at any stage you forget your password, click the forgot password link at the bottom of the login page. Next, enter your username or email address. Then click I'm not a robot and select the relevant images. Click the verify button, followed by the submit button. If you have entered a valid email address or username, you will receive an email containing a link to reset your password. Once you have logged into the system, you will see a list of the events to which you have been invited to participate. At the top of the screen, you will also see options whereby you can amend user information, such as company information, user information, or also change your password. Click the user information button. From here, the user can amend any information that is required. Simply click through on the different tabs such as company information, whereby you can edit this information. You can also change your password from in here. Lastly, remember to hit the back button to return to the event list. Section two, accessing the event. To access the relevant event, simply click the event title. The first time you access the event, you will be required to download and read the PQQ information documentation. This is a one-time task and you will not be expected to complete this task each time you access the event from here on in. To do so, click the event title. Click here to download the information documents. Once downloaded, open the file. Then carefully read through the document, including all instructions, and ensure that you are fully familiar with the contents of this document. Once done, you can close the file, hit the back button, Click the tick box to confirm that you have read and understood the documentation and then click the participate button. Once clicked, you'll be brought into the task list for that particular event, which shows the required actions that you must complete as part of your submission. 
task one is where you download and answer the PQQ. And task two through to six contain declaration forms that must be downloaded, read, signed, and then uploaded later as part of your submission. To access the PQQ, select task one. From here, simply click the download button to download the Excel template, which contains the PQQ questionnaire. Once downloaded, you'll be then able to open the file from the relevant location on your computer or device. Section three, completing the PQQ. Navigate to the relevant location on your computer or device where you have saved the file. And double click on the file name to open. Upon opening the file, you may be presented with the following message which appears at the top of the PQQ template. If you receive this message, please click the Enable Editing button. It is important that you do so, otherwise it may make, make it difficult to complete certain sections of the form. Secondly, please carefully read the instruction section, paying particular attention to the fact that only fields highlighted in yellow can be answered and all other fields will be locked and no changes can be made. It is also important to note that certain fields are mandatory and these will be clearly marked throughout the form. At the bottom of the page, you will note there is a checklist showing the breakdown of the questionnaire into the seven sections. The status for each section will automatically update as and when you complete the respective section. However, please note that this checklist is provided as guidance only and it is the responsibility of the operator to carefully check their PQQ before submitting. To begin the questionnaire, simply click the Begin PQQ button. Way around the questionnaire or to go to the relevant section, you can use the navigation buttons at the bottom of each page. These buttons will take you either to the previous section or the next section, or you can return to the instructions page. If for some reason these buttons are not working or you prefer not to use them, you can simply click on the relevant tab at the bottom of each page to take you to the respective section. There are validation rules built throughout the questionnaire, designed in a way that will hopefully guide you through the process. You will note from before that only cells highlighted in yellow can be edited, and also that all mandatory fields are marked with a red X as shown below. These validation rules can be seen more clearly in the demonstration that follows. The first piece of validation in the form is located at the top under the form status heading. By default, this will be set to not complete, and then will later change to complete once the user has completed all of the mandatory fields. In this particular example, you can see that this is a partially completed form. We can see that the date of establishment is yet to be completed. However, you will also note within this field, there is further validation, hence that if you were to enter a date in the future, this would not be accepted as the date of establishment must be prior to the 31st of March 2024. To rectify this, simply click the retry button and amend the date. You'll see this has been accepted and a green tick has shown up where this had previously said mandatory field. Also in here, certain fields are conditional, meaning that 
CRO or the company registration number will only be required where the legal status is not a sole trader. If we change from sole trader to private company, you will see that this field is now mandatory and I must enter a registration number. The status of this field will also change once completed. Also of note is an error message down below stating that the email address is not in a valid email format. This also can be fixed. entering a valid email format. The form status is still not complete as we have one remaining field that is mandatory. You will note that these fields too are conditional and will be mandatory if the user has stated that they are part of a consortium. If we change this to no, they will no longer be applicable and the cells are grayed out. Another key form of validation in the questionnaire is where the data entered does not meet the pass fail criteria as set out in the PQQ selection criteria. The following example shows where an operator has entered no under the following health and safety minimum requirement that all applicants must hold a safety statement in accordance with section 20 of the Safety, Health and Welfare at Work Act 2005. The other areas of validation which operators should be aware of is in relation to the fleet profile and the qualification panels. If we look firstly at the fleet profile, you will note in here that we have listed the seating capacity for each vehicle type. And down below, if you should exceed the seating capacity for that particular vehicle type, it will show as an error and this will show up as a fail in both that line item and also in the form status, as you can see here in your checklist. So it's important to keep note of this and make sure that the seating capacity that you're entering for your vehicle is in line with the seating capacity table above. Also in this table, there is validation on seat belts as this is mandatory. If an operator states that there are no seat belts in their vehicle, this will also classify as a fail. Linked with the vehicle type and your fleet profile, if we move to the qualification panel, we can see here that the panel selection verification is currently okay. And that's because we've selected a taxi for Carlo and our fleet profile, we have one taxi vehicle type. If for example, you made an error here and you selected mini, a message will appear to say that you have no mini vehicles listed in your fleet. So again, it is important to be checking this verification tool, otherwise this may be classed as a fail. To remedy this, click in the cell and hit delete. Click on the cell with taxi and from the drop down, select yes. Another area in here that we would like to bring your attention to is the important note here, which states that the panel selections made below will overwrite any pre-existing or past selections. Once your below selections are submitted to bus earn, you will only be invited to tender for the panels which you select in the table below. What this means is if you're selecting yes for Carlo Taxi now, but sometime in the future when you're submitting a separate PQQ and you remove this, and select yes for a taxi for Claire. That means you will only be invited to any tenders for Claire taxi from that point forward and you will be removed from the Carlo panel. Once you've completed your selection and the verification is correct, just double check your checklist in the instructions tab 
to make sure that everything is complete. Once you are satisfied that you've completed each of the seven sections of the questionnaire, it is now time to upload your PQQ response. Go to task one of the PQQ and select the upload Excel form. Click choose file. And navigate to the location on your computer or device where you have saved the file. Double click the file name and hit submit. You'll see this is processing and afterwards you will hopefully get a message to say that the bid has been successfully submitted. Hit the back button and hit the back button again and this will return you to the task list where you can see that the status for task one has now changed to OK and you can see the time and date which this was completed. The remaining tasks, number two through to number six, require that you download a declaration form, complete the form and then upload a signed copy. Each task is the same and we'll take task two as an example. Click on the task title, download the form, which you can then save to your desktop or print. And then once you have signed it and are happy that it is completed, simply click the upload button. Navigate to where you have saved the file. Attach the file. Under a description. Submit. Once the document is uploaded, again, the status for this particular task will change to OK and will show the date and time it is completed. Simply repeat this for each of the declarations required. Once you have completed all six tasks, the submission is now complete and there's nothing left for you to do. You will note that the status has updated to state that all mandatory actions are fulfilled and the status of each task has also changed to OK with a date and time upon which the task was completed. It is important to note that there is no submit button. Once the status of the task is set to OK, then the information has been received and there is nothing else to be done. Also of note is the closing date for the questionnaire. If any changes or modifications are required to your submission, you can do as many amendments as you like up until the closing time and date. Once this date and time has surpassed, no further amendments will be accepted, no further submissions are permissible. Section four, reviewing submission errors. There may be occasions whereby when you're submitting your response that you encounter some errors in your submission. The following will demonstrate what to do if this situation occurs. So in this example, we are submitting the form which we have prepared and you can see that it is processing. However, we've received this red error message saying that we have encountered errors during the submission. This is not a problem as the system will actually help you identify where the error lies so you can rectify the problem and hopefully successfully submit your bid thereafter. You will see that there is a report attached here called rejected bid form and also here 
it clearly states the cell and the sheet name in which the error exists. So in this case, we're looking at cell C39 of the organizational capacity sheet. If we download the report and open that file, we can see that here is our submission and an additional tab for errors and warnings has been added and it will tell you exactly the location of where the error lies and you can click that to go to that particular cell. In this case, it was the fact that we had forgotten to state the number of drivers, which is a mandatory field. So what we can do now is we can close this report We can then open our file. save we click the back button here and go to upload form this will once again process the submission And we will see that now that we have added the number of drivers to that mandatory field, the bid has now been successful. Section five, clarification questions. If you have any questions throughout the process, you can raise a question directly from within the Cooper system. To do this, Navigate to the main event page and on the far left of the page you will see an option for ask a question. Simply click this option, ask new question, enter a title for the clarification question and in the box below type your message. In this case, we're asking if subcontracting the services is allowed. You also have the option then to add attachments to the question if needs be. You can also use the options available to format your message. Once you are happy that the message is complete, click submit question. Once this is received, a member of the bus air and procurement team will respond in due course and you will see the reply to the message will appear within this section of the system under the heading of reply. Alternatively, you may choose not to use the Cooper system to send in your clarification message, in which case, if you prefer, you can directly email the following school's PQQ event specific email address. We have now reached the end of the tutorial. We hope that you found it helpful and informative and we thank you for your attention. However, if you do have any further questions, please direct them to beschooltenders.busearn.ie. Thank you.